It's no surprise that software engineering and programming is changing quickly. AI is getting better and better. Just two years ago, we had ChatGPT, and today we have all kinds of new AI tools coming out every single day. I think at this point, we all understand that AI is not going to replace our jobs. It's simply going to change how we do them, and it's definitely something that we need to embrace. Now, with that in mind, in this video, I'm going to show you another new AI coding assistant, one that's pretty cool and that you'll definitely want to check out. Now, this this is the Watson X Code Assistant, which is IBM's AI powered tool to help developers streamline their processes and increase efficiency. Now, this really helps you focus on the interesting and fun parts of coding while getting rid of all of that boring work. So, if you need to do things like document your code, write a unit test, understand what a complex function is doing, you can rely on the AI Coding Assistant to do that, where you can focus on the more interesting and fun parts. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set it up. It acts as an extension for VS Code or Eclipse. It's also free to use under the free trial. So let me give you kind of a quick showcase demo slash tutorial, and you guys can see what you think of this AI coding assistant. So I'm on the website here and I'll show you how to get it set up, but I do quickly need to disclose that this video is made in partnership with IBM. Like I said before, this is not a review. IBM does not tell me what I need to say in this video. This is simply a showcase and I'm just demoing the product. You guys can make your own judgment and decide if you want to use it or not. Again, it's free under their free trial. So in order to check it out and start using it though, you can press on try for free. This is gonna bring you to a page where you can sign in or create a new IBM account. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna sign into that, but for you, make a new one, and then it's gonna direct you to the place where you can initialize the code assistant. So once you've made your account, it's gonna take a second, and then it will bring you to a page that looks like this. Now, if there's some kind of tour showing up on your screen, you can just end that, you don't need to go through that. And what you can do is simply press on installing the extension. Now, again, what this is gonna do is work as a VS Code or Eclipse extension. And all we need to do is just get an API key for this. Once we have the API key, then we can go into VS Code, which is what I'm going to be using in this video. Just paste the API key in the configuration for the extension, and then it will be good to go. So in order to do that, you clicked on that page, then you can click on here where it says creating an IBM Cloud API key. And then you can press here where it says IBM Cloud API Keys. Now, if you don't want to go through all of those clicks, I will just link this in the description, cloud.ibm.com slash IAM slash API Keys. You can go to this page once you're signed in and simply press on Create. Give the API key a name. In this case, I'll call it VS Code. And everything else you can just leave as the default and then press Create. Now I'm going to copy that API key and the next steps are going to happen in VS Code. So let me open that up. So I'm in VS Code and actually I'm using VS Code Insiders here. This is like the beta release of VS Code. Don't worry, it's pretty much the exact same thing. I'm just doing this so that my environment is as closely matched to yours as possible and I don't have all kinds of other extensions popping up. Anyways, in order to get started here, what we're going to do is go to the extensions tab and we're simply going to search for the Watson X extension. This is going to be the code assistant. The first one here with this nice logo, Watson X code assistant is the one that we want to install. I did not mean to click on that. So we're just going to press on install, wait one second, and then we can open the extension pane and we can configure it. Okay. So once it's installed, you'll see it on the left hand side here click on that, and then it's going to ask you to log in with your API key, or you can run this locally with Olama, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go log in, I'm going to press on allow, I'm going to paste my API key and hit enter. Okay, that's going to take a second, and then you're going to see that the cloud window will pop open, and now we're able to use this extension. Okay, so you can see we've got a chat window here. I'll quickly walk you through some of the main features. Then I want to open up an existing code base I have and show you how it works with that. So obviously this can do things like code generation. I can ask it to generate code. I can also use slash commands. So I can do something like slash document, slash docs, slash explain. These are built into the assistant and they just make it a lot faster to perform common operations. We also have the ability to tag different files. Now I'm not in a code base right now, so I'll show you this in a second, but you can do at, and then you can type the name of any file file that you have in the current directory, and you can reference it for context. As well as that, you can have multiple chat sessions here, so you can make new ones, you can label them. You can also go and have a prompt library here, which has some common prompts for operations that you might want to perform a lot. So let me open up a project here that we can test this out on, and then let's go from there. So I just opened up a project here related to a web scraping API that I was building. Anyways, you can see that we have a little bit of code and I've opened up the code assistant chat window. Now inside of here, if I want, I can tag different portions of my code for giving it context. So I can do something like at scrape 
And then notice that I don't just have to tag a particular file, which I could do script.py, I can tag a function or a class uh, or a model or whatever, right? Or different portions of my code. So I can say at scrape job, and then I can ask it a question related to that. Anyways, let's do a little bit of code generation here though. So I'll say actually, yes, at uh, scrape job, can you generate another model for a, I don't know, let's say log of this model. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense, but let's see what that will do for us. So it did that pretty quickly and you can see that I can copy it in and that's the result that I get. Now let's just make a new chat window. So let's go chat sessions, new window. What I can do as well if I want is I can use these buttons that you see here. So we have explain, document, unit test. So if I press on this, for example, explain, it's gonna say slash explain and then it's gonna grab the scrape job and then it tells us exactly what this does. So this code defines a SQL Alchemy model class. I like that it has the buttons here because it's very fast in order to actually use that and it works for classes, functions, obviously other programs languages as well. Now, if I do something like document, uh, let's see if it can generate the documentation for us here and hopefully give us some kind of doc string. Okay, so there you go. We get that documented code. And then if I paste that inside of here, you can see that now this entire class has been documented with the attributes, the methods, we have the init, we have the repr. So it actually added some of those things uh, that I don't believe I had on the class before. Of course, we can also generate a unit test for this model if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and do that. Sweet, so when I press that, it got the slash unit test scrape job, and then you can see that it generates that unit test for me, and then obviously I would need to put that in a testing file and set that up, but you can see that it's able to do that. Now, as well as using the slash commands directly from the window here, you also have the ability to do this from the command prompt. So if you open up the command prompt with control shift P or command shift P, you can do uh, actually something like explain. So if I say explain or explain this, whatever I'm highlighted on will actually get explained using the Watson X code assistant. If I do something like unit test, same thing, you can see that it pops up here and then I can press that and it's effectively the same command just from the command palette in case you don't want to press these buttons. And also if you want, you can just highlight something, right click it and then press on Watson X code assistant and then explain this in case it's not something like a function class, etc. Now we just opened some other code here, which is a Python automation script, which automatically unsubscribes from emails. And I want to show you there's another cool feature we have, which is translate. So I can actually translate code from one language to another. So I can do something like slash translate to and then JavaScript, and then I can just reference the code that I want. So in this case, it's in at main.py and then give this a second and it should give me the translation now in JavaScript. Okay, so there we go. We now have this code. Obviously, I could copy it and put it in a JavaScript file. Now, beyond that, we can also go to different languages. So I can say something like slash. So I'm going to go slash translate and I'm going to go to and maybe Ruby and then same thing. I'm going to do at main.py. If I just wanted a specific function, maybe I just want to do the search for email. I'll go at search for email and let's see if we can do that for us. Okay, so there we go. Now we have our code generated in Ruby. Anyways, if you guys code a lot, you know how to use a code assistant better than I can explain in a few minutes here. The point is you have the slash commands for useful operations. You have the at and the tagging for context. You can ask this to do things like translations, which is quite cool. If you want to get into the settings, you can go here to settings in VS Code. You can type WCA for the Watson X code assistant and you can mess with all of this kind of stuff. You can configure it with Olama. You can access things from the command palette as I showed you and overall, this is a cool assistant. It just works as an extension. So it's not too intrusive, which I like in the editor. Definitely useful and can help you increase your efficiency and streamline some of those processes. If you guys do want to check it out again, you can do that for free from the link in the description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.